Alright ladies and gentlemen, uh, for the past couple of days we're just going to go over what's been going on in the esports scene. Obviously I'm just going to be using Twitter and maybe some clips if there is any. Uh, so first things first, uh, Flame Sword he messed up, didn't get into this big tournament. It was one of the biggest tournaments in you know history. It hit the cap of 512 teams, but I, I did w w look at it in the on the site. Um, there's like 553 teams that signed up. It was absolutely insane. Um, another thing here. Um, let's see what we got here in this tweet. <laughs> so back-to-back -back weekends with Halo tournaments leading to the big event in whatever. I can't say that word. Sorry, guys. This is December. Open 2 goes down starting at 11. Uh, top four teams from next week's kickoff qualifier will secure pool, pool play. Expenses paid for the city. Uh, the next f four pool play slots plus expenses will go to the top four teams with the most HES points from all previous qualifiers. So these things are all important. So those two tournaments, like, they kind of matter because you gain a lot of pro points. So you don't do well in this tournament which matters the most um it might give you a, a security blanket right so there's eight teams that could qualify and uh, it's pretty crazy to see uh, i wonder like who will qualify uh, it's a for sure thing it will be optic and cloud nine for sure once we see those results um kc pioneers have a good opportunity as well they place very well um and after that for pro points uh, it's all over the place it's pretty close so let's just move on uh, into these tweets um here it is um if you guys haven't followed them on twitter you guys should follow these guys um, it's uh, HGS Intel. Um, if you don't follow me, um, they do a lot of stuff like updating and giving you guys everything they can. Uh, you can go into their Discord as well. So as you can see here, <coughs> the the biggest tournament of all time um, with that players competed was. I think H5, is that what that is? H5, Xbox Live, or H3 Land. There was 314 peop, uh, teams. Uh, yeah, whatever this is. HWC 16. Absolutely insane. And for this, this is just an online qualifier type thing. But at the first week was 406. And it says here 512, but I look... Uh, if it had more teams to sign up, 100% would have been at 553. So there's that. I, thanks to Moses on the graph. <laughs> uh, here's a nice little um, jump video to show you guys. Improve your gameplay. I try to do this. It's actually kind of hard. So I'm looking forward to watching this. So. This first jump on live fire is super useful, especially as a starting strat. It'll give you an early angle up to top mid, or you can just use it as an outplay. You have to jump off this panel and then very precisely jump clamber to this ledge above, which is more difficult than I'm making it look. To get to this panel, you jump hold crouch, then you got a late jump off this panel. So you walk off and time the jump as late as possible to give yourself enough leeway to reach for this clamber. To hit that clamber, make sure you're holding crouch in the air as well. If you're holding crouch, it'll extend the range of this clamber so you can actually reach it. If you don't hold crouch, this jump is either very difficult or completely impossible. This first jump. Which is facts, I try to do them, but now that I watched him, uh, I'll try it again by holding crouch. So there's that. Uh, let's see what else, uh, we got some more. Show one jump on Aquarius, I'm sure there's others, but this one I found to be very useful. It's this ledge on the wall that you can stand on and shimmy across. It's a great spot to sit in if you want to look either up or down below.
A couple notes about this ledge. No need to crouch to stand on it, so don't worry about crouching. Just a standard jump is fine. If you want to stand on it, similar to the ghost jump on live fire, you want to have as little downward momentum landing on this ledge as possible. So if you're jumping from below, then it's easy to stand on. But if you're jumping from above, the downward momentum is going to throw you off of that ledge and you'll fall. You can't stand on it. So if you are coming in from above the chow this direction, you want to basically jump off of it when you land on it. And you want to time that jump as late as possible. Because if I jump too early when I hit it, it'll bounce me out to the left. But if I wait, there's a perfect timing where if I let myself kind of connect with the wall and fall a bit and then wait before I jump, it'll hold me here. And I can kind of continuously jump and hold the angle and then jump off if I need to. You can also slide into it and apparently stand on it. I don't think I've ever done that before, for the record. You can slide into it and stand on it. So big, you know, good note if you're uh, cracked with your movement. Normally what I would say is slide on it and then thrust into the wall if you have a thrust that'll hold you there so that's a nice little cool video there hope you guys learn some new things um, as you can see here uh, 772 total teams around the world in this week's qualifier uh, is competing um, you could add probably it to like 800 uh, if those like other players could have competed in NA uh, moving on we got some former Gears players Rowdy Chidwick and Bang they're looking for one for Infinite uh, they're experienced players um, some of them is placed pro but I don't know uh, but um yeah um, if you guys are interested, in, this is in your, these are Europeans, by the way. So if you guys are interested, you guys can, t uh, um, I don't know, hit them up. Another gears thing, a theme kind of switch over. Uh, you got explosive, mental, solars, and then Tony Sun is new, uh, into this roster. Um, these guys are making a the switch. They're going to try and compete in Halo. Uh, I hope for the best. Uh, if you watch my Gears version of this, I explain everything. Um, if you're a coach, uh, this is a good opportunity and an organization uh, to pick these guys up because they know what it takes to win. So there's that. Um, ESL Halo. Um, these guys won twice now um, in the Australian, I think this is like league. Uh, Neutra Bullet, you got Barcode, AK, we'll, we'll follow him, Maddie Stone, Pratt's, and Flex Reigns. Um, these guys are winning. Um, if you're Mind Freak, you should 100% pick these guys up. Like, it's a no-brainer. Like, what the hell are you guys doing? Um, or any orgs that are in the Australian region. Yeah, it's just a no-brainer. Uh, one another 100 thieves oh he deleted the tweet unfortunate um here's another little cool video from mints of halo infinite's campaign and i found that there was a chopper at the base of the tower i was like oh my god i can launch across the entire ring with this so what you're watching on screen now is the combination of the chopper EMP launch and it's just scratching the surface of what is possible. I've got so much to show you guys in the next couple days, so I hope you all enjoy it. Hey guys, so I was playing on the So that's honestly really cool. Um that's gonna be probably very useful in the campaign because it's gonna be like a similar like Gears 5 open world, it's not really 
a good thing of open world, but it'll be useful to get across places. <sighs> um, we got another nerdy thing in Halo. So, uh, let's see what we're here. Some pretty cool stuff, uh, it's like in the middle of mid-game, or even like at the start of a game, you could use those like, sticky, uh, I guess it would be mid-game, because you're not going to have a sticky grenade, but mid-game stuff to get the weapons, so that's a pretty cool video, uh, thank you for him. Uh, Lucid, he made some good points, um, Halo Infinite criticisms that have been repeated over and over, that I will now repeat again. Game stability needs work. Add rejoin, please. Uh, this is a hundred percent. Like, this should be a must when the game officially launches, because I find it kind of uh, unacceptable at the <coughs> you know age of gaming where we're at now that we don't have a rejoin feature. Uh, custom bugs and options, obviously, for the guys that are competing. Uh, maybe in the near future, you know, it'll be. A problem for those custom fun games um, <coughs> there's been um, some bugs where the teams they randomly switch for some reason and they have to like restart the lobby like leave the lobby make a new host or something just for it to be fixed it's pretty annoying and time-consuming for those guys that are competing because every little bit of time matters right so um, there's the desync aka the walls are swiss cheese so there's a thing in this game where you feel like you're behind the wall but you die um low-key annoying when you think like okay i'm gonna play some damage oh i'm hurt here and all right now i'm gonna play my life and boom you're dead through the wall um overall progression and lack of content <coughs> i understand that it's a free-to-play game and they need to make some money through the the content side of things but the progression thing not it man those challenges are mad annoying i don't enjoy the game i don't have a have any fun doing that it feels like it's a chore um i don't know you guys can let me know in the comment section down below if you feel the same way like that new event with the fracture thing i'm like <laughs> playing the stupid game mode fiesta the whole time and i'm just not enjoying myself it took like forever to finally get a kill that someone had a killing spree and then doing the five killing spree challenge holy smokes man i was just all you hear hearing me is just cussing the whole time so i agree with everything here i'll probably make a video on it what i think needs to like with the changes i feel that needs to be done but moving on, uh, we got a nice little kill clip here from my boy Frago. Uh, so let's just watch it. Hey, Frago. <laughs> 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 Top of the sandbags, you're not Mike. He's weak, 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 weak. 
Pillar door. Oh my door. god. Oh my god, you just saved my ass. This kid just ran to you, it was from garage. Oh, yeah, one sh one shot now. nest. Can you go to oh, it? He's like, he's like double nest down there. He's lower. Trying to. He's on the elbow down there? Oh, man. I got your one shot. One shot front end. Oh, oh my god. One shot garage. Oh my god! Watch you, watch you, watch you. Oh Eastwick, no, that, that last one there, like, oh man, this guy's gonna have a crazy montage when it's all said and done, after like, just the first event, um, as you saw there, he was playing with flame swords, so, um, he's like, trying out with them, at, at the moment, um, uh, his, uh, like, rogue company boys, they kinda know that, so, if it doesn't work out for them, he's probably going to go back to his road company boys, but we'll see what happens. Um, as you may know, that they're probably going to play with Frag out um, in that qualifier. Who knows? Who knows what those teams are going to be? Um, another tweet here. Uh, Brown um, and like PC Pioneers as a whole, um, they signed these guys like a year before. Uh, um, Halo 5 was going to be coming out. He had the full confidence in the guys, uh, and Adam and Tashi and making this esports scene great again. Um, and he had a great, um, feel for the players that he signed that are going to be competing for the top spot, which they have been, you know, they placed top four in the first week and, you know, spoiler alert, they placed top three in this week's uh qualifier so he's just trying to put it out there that he you know he feels good about himself but also like the program and everything um obviously they feel like they should have been in part partnered uh with the um, hcs esports or whatever but still um made a good signing and picking those guys up before they got picked up by even bigger orgs Another thing here is, um, you know, this guy was on their team. He got dropped after the first week. <coughs> he, uh, I think, placed pretty solid, uh, solid in a placement. You know, he's with a pickup team, uh, not with the team that he was been playing with in Halo Five a lot with that chemistry. Um, but um, Manny is a new player on their team, um, and like I said, they placed well. Uh, moving on, we got a nice little funny clip here to show you guys. <coughs> uh, something to not do. Um, don't like sprint, dive into uh, lifts, or else this will happen. You will not make it. All right, you won't make it to the other side. All right. So moving on. Uh, here's um another thing here. Um, their scrim schedule for uh, this upcoming week, you know, starting today, they're supposed to have a scrim against Optic, but who knows if that's even true? Um, there's like a a clip of one of their players. I don't know if it was Lethal or Snakebite, but they said that optic wasn't going to scrim so i'm surprised to see them there um i was just reading that if you guys want to read that that's pretty insane um but these guys they were um pretty dominant in the halo 5 game so all these like other top teams are avoiding them they don't want them to learn they don't want them to get good so it's going to be rough for this team for like the first probably two events, but after that I feel like they're going to learn and know a lot and they're going to surpass some teams. So maybe that's why like teams like KCP, you know, they get to scrim those other top teams. <sighs> they are where they are now, so it's pretty interesting to see in the esports scene like avoiding certain teams giving them knowledge you know it makes sense in a way but it's kind of lame in in the same 
way as well but it is what it is <coughs> oh that's a gears thing sorry about that um <sighs> congratulations to pittsburgh knights um again there you're back-to-back -back champs just like the the aussie boys didn't um these guys obviously were picked up by pittsburgh knights they're gonna be under the org for a while um they're just a dominant force in uh latin america and it shows because they were playing in halo 5 and dominating and beating some pretty solid na teams as well in those uh esports arena sunday cups so i expect them to do well um in the tournament um there was a sp surprise for me because f and i feel like they're like that number two team but i guess not i'm wrong um there's some other players in there um that are competing uh, there's some former Gears players from the Latim scene that are also competing in this tournament. I don't know how well they did, but we'll get into that later on. Um, in the EU scene, again, back-to-back -back, uh, champions. It seems like this is a theme that's going on in every region. Uh, we have Shady. Uh, we'll follow these guys. We got Shady, Legend, uh, Esrika. And snipe drone uh, this guy used to play for the guys that are on the Navi org right now um, Navi's probably kicking themselves and fanatic you know they waited it out and they could pick these guys up and have the number one team in EU but with Navi they just went with you know oh what happened in the past <coughs> and picked those guys up but or one thing I learned, um, if you're a manager, bro, in the esports scene, um, not all the time in the past with their resume, they're going to be good in the next game, right? Like, it's, it's not going to happen. So, <coughs> and again, same thing back to back winners, um, they face Cloud Nine. In the finals again, but this time they were on the winner's side, so Cloud9 had to beat them twice. Uh, they beat them 3 1 in map count. Uh, watch some of the games, uh, it was pretty intense for some of them, but it was like a clear, like, oh, they got this in the bag. Uh, um, but yeah, uh, it's just crazy to see to start off in Halo. I think it's probably a good thing that Optic is winning because they have the most fans. So they're going to be more eyes on the game. Uh, experimenting with colors. Hear the notes on scoreboard read readability. But thoughts other than that. Um, I think. <coughs> uh, the colors are fine. They just got to like. Do the difference in the font. If they're going to use those colors. Like it's pretty easy. Just change the font and the colors man. And you're fine. Uh, Dr. Disrespect, cheating in Halo is a scary thing to think about. If it gets out of control like Warzone, everyone's going to question everything. And then it turns into this huge hackization movement nobody wants. Microsoft, give us some relief. It's such a good game. Hopefully Microsoft listens. Um, I know they don't really give a shit. Or it's the people that, you know... <laughs> I don't know what the heck goes on in Microsoft, to be honest. They just make poor decisions. Um, but this is a chance for them to do something great. And uh, hopefully they'll find some kind of anti-cheat thing and ban people. Um, because there is some ch like obvious cheaters out there. And it's just annoying to see. <coughs> Um, pro players are complaining about how the best of threes um, series, um, the only time there's a best of five is literally in the grand finals, and a lot of these players and teams are like annoyed about it in a way. They want it to be longer, so um, for example here, uh, Snake Buddy says they gotta like wait two hours after they win a series or something. Like, there's a lot of complaints going on. So, who knows? Maybe they'll change the the settings. Uh, if you make it on to a Sunday, it'll be all best of fives, or or at least in like 
appear in the top four, it'll be best of fives. But literally, if you're in the grand finals, that's the only times it's a best of five. <coughs> um, here's another thing with Lethal complaining about ranked. Uh, it would be nice if infinite ranked matches were actually meant to match all players of similar rank with each other instead of dumb team balancing. Can't even play with other people without having people put in the game who are definitely out of their territory. No fun for them either, to be honest. Um, I was watching his stream last night, and it was funny uh, when he was saying uh, him hearing his teammates in game chat, and he's like, whoa, I don't think we should be in this uh, lobby uh, out of our league, which uh, Lethal literally said, uh, yeah. You should not be here. Um, this guy has to play with like a bunch of shitters all the time. So I could understand. Uh, I play a lot of ranked in the past and gears, and it's happened to me, and it's pretty annoying. Like, literally have to, as, as he says here, glad to hear, to be honest, because the algorithm can't account for me. Maybe not being 15 Red Bulls mixed with G Fold Deep trying to put on a master class. Yeah, that's how I felt if I needed to win a rank match in Gears. Uh, he's probably feeling the same way. Uh, tapping buttons. Um, he's on that PK roster. <coughs> um, he's going to be good. And this is another thing with all these um, players in other countries uh, is that visa problem. A lot of them had that problem. From Mexico, I've seen some of those players had that problem trying to get that. Um for the NA like tournaments sometimes and couldn't like travel so this is really good uh, for the top Mexican uh, team um, this is like one of the better players so hopefully we'll see how they do um, happy to see him uh, did I follow him okay good um, yeah we already know that <coughs> again um, Auction Esports enters HCS. Former playing with SSG. They place top six. Pro teams won't scrim. Sentinel, unknown why. 100 Thieves interested in entering HCS. Mox makes the switch. Optic, Cartel, and Nutri go back to back. Um, I'm going to say PK as well. PK as well. Went back to back. I'm sure. So he knows. I hope I'll, I'll help him out. <sighs> um, and then he got explosive and co making the switch. You know the gears legend. So hopefully next week we got even more news to talk about. Um, for the pen halo, if you guys are interested in playing in this, is a double elimination bracket. Uh, it's on December 5th, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, um, 64 team capacity, North America only. Um, so LATAM players can play as well, as you can see here. Um, if you guys have any players or anybody to play, um, this definitely is something you guys should at least play it. You know, it's practice. Um, yeah, I was just... Just here to give you guys that information. Uh, just go to Twitter, follow Pet Halo. It looks like they do a lot of these tournaments. Um, and lastly, uh, but least, uh, this guy is streaming on Twitch while cheating. So, <laughs> could read that, pause the screen when he says, but let's just watch. I need to keep this stalker rifle in my hand. This is like my one shot. No swish. Can't die like that. I don't know how I'm gonna go about this. You call out with cheats? Absolutely insane. And then if you witness, um, you have Lucid, and he's playing it looks like he has like all the oxygen guys on his team just for ranked in that 
in that lobby and this guy is 100% clearly cheating he has wall hacks you can see where all the enemies are it's absolutely insane that this guy just did that um, he got banned instantly and I don't know why like why, why it takes like this proof obviously it's an automatic ban but like <coughs> There's that guy that's like gamer tag is player 1000 and something. I submitted a ticket. There's people all over the internet like complaining about that guy and he's still roaming free just shitting on people with this like automatic like aimer on people like auto aim I guess you could say. Uh, I just find it ridiculous. Um, they say to use the ticket. I did that. They told me to go somewhere else. I don't feel like doing all that. Um, there definitely needs to be a report button in the game because that just takes way too much time. That takes way too much time for the people to go read it in there. And like, if there's a simple report button and it has a certain amount of reports, then you could go look into that player's profile and his games. I think that would be a great feature in the the ranking system because it's just fucking ridiculous. I actually took the time out of my way to report on this motherfucker cheating with the auto aim player one thousand eight nine six whatever, and to see him a few days later, I see it on Twitter of the same guy with the auto aim just beaming kids, not moving around, even lethal on his stream saying like. When the guy was saying, who's the best player? He said, player 1,000, whatever. Like, the guy doesn't have to run. It's like a, like a blessing if he just even walks. The guy doesn't have to do anything but just, you know, use his cheats. Uh, the, the cheating will definitely hurt this game. Um, I really hope they have, like, some sort of anti-cheat. Because it's just ridiculous. Go buy Valorant. I mean, not Val yeah, Valorant's cheat system, and just put in that game. Because that's the only one that works. I always see on Twitter one of my friends like, why does every game not have like their system? So just buy it, bro. Like, <clears throat> yeah, and Mixer and doing all that dumb stuff. Why don't you just buy their program, bro? Like, honestly, like all these other programs obviously don't work. It's fucking insane. But uh, that's about it for that. Um, we're going to go into these rosters real quick. Um, as you can see here, PK is a LATAM team. <coughs> uh, we're just going to keep moving on, see what we got here. Um, if things go wrong, like, I could see maybe this guy getting dropped, Royal 2, because he's just been complaining about the game a lot. Uh, new team here. So now that I finally know who Vetra and Bards are playing with, they're playing with a guy named JK and Fleurisly. So there's that. Um, another thing here is this Call Mad guy. I don't know if he's playing with that team anymore. I saw him playing with another team at one point. Uh, Epileptic, I don't know if he's part of Flame Swords team anymore. Frag out is trying out with them. Um, again, Mentos 100% not playing with them. I guess it was like a tryout. Um, I did say call it playing with these guys. It was Rami, Nick, Nicey, and call it. So who knows what's going on in there? And I told you guys before. These guys are just rogue company guys. They're just playing for fun. They didn't really scrim at all. They're just playing ranked all the time. Um, another thing here is Skari and Life Alert was playing with Set of One and Two. Um, Hunter is still playing with Hysteria, but he was also playing with Triton and Rob the Turtle. Um, this team here with Chaotic, if I, Firebird, and Dark Matter. Um, they drop stress, uh, former Canadian, you know, sorry to see that go. I'm going to delete all that because I have the team over here. Um, I'm going to keep moving on. Yeah, this thing, Solar is definitely not, but these guys probably playing together, former Gears pros. Um, Fnatic potentially picking these guys up, Predevinator, but not really, um, I seen they're under an org called G1. 
I don't know. So there's that to let you guys know. Um, uh, what's else? Um, so here's my friends' uh, teams. Uh, oh man, Raid, Raiden. Oh, I'm I'm getting I'm getting fucked for this. I don't know, I'm spelling this game or tag wrong. So my boy Raiden, Intelligent, Deathwish. They're also playing with a guy named Shadow. Uh, they're not playing with Merkic anymore. They're not playing with uh, some other guy named Max or something. But they did better than uh, last week. So the egos were dropped. Um, there's no more egos. They just play as a team. They're playing really good. Uh, I hope for the best. Uh, as you can see, our stress new team was Winter, Jesse, Unleash, and Swiper. Uh, wonder how long that's going to last. Obviously, the explosives team right here with the Gears guys. And then the team that they... Uh, uh, they dropped um, stress. They picked up eccentric. So there's that. Um, we're gonna go into the rosters here, or the tournaments. Uh, let's go to the Mexico tournament. So we're just gonna go through the brackets and see what happens here. So it says you here H5 kids TNT. You guys can let me know if you guys know these players. Um, nothing new there. I'm wondering where all those Gears pros place. Like, that's my most interest. This is in the loser bracket, so... I don't know what they call themselves. TPM. They call themselves Gears Kids. Uh, Envision. Damn, I don't think these guys did well at all. Ravioli lovers? <laughs> Are they ultra? Upgrade. GGS. Yeah, I don't know where those gears guys placed. As you can see here, um, TNT. Defeated F and I. That's like a huge upset. That means um, F and I. They placed. Um, they placed. What is that? Top six. Yeah, top. No, top four. So that's actually insane. They lost to Danny Knight, Cosmic, Renegon, and Reaper Reaps. Um, that's like a huge upset, I, I guess, because then, uh, as you can see here, Leave No Witnesses uh, went on to play, and then obviously Pittsburgh Knights won. Uh, I'll obviously put a, as you can see here, 3-0, easy. Um, I'll obviously put something in the description down below, um, all these brackets so you guys can see, but... I'm definitely going to take a look at where those guys placed. So there you go. 102 teams signed up. And in Europe, 85 teams signed up. I'm going to take a look at the bracket. I'm going to see who Navi lost to. Uh, I have to, like, refresh this, I guess. For the bracket. All right, so 128 teams in Europe. Okay, so Cartel, you know, they're the guys who won. They beat OEX 3-0. Uh, they've been undefeated the whole fucking thing. They didn't lose any maps or anything. Um, right here, as you could see, Navi launched HMDA. That's like a huge, huge upset. Um, on HMDA, you had Clonely... Riots, um, Remix, so there's that, um, these guys are just, you know, old time pros in the scene, um, wondering where, uh, these COD pros, where they placed, yeah, COD players, they placed in, what is that, that'd be like, top, Three, top four, top 16, it looks like. 
unfortunate for them. Oh, yeah, unfortunate for them. Uh, but moving on, uh, A and Z bracket. Uh, as you as you know, Nutra Bullet won. Uh, we had Divine Mind and Dire Wolf, so it looks like those are gonna be like your top three teams in Australia. Uh, Divine Mine and Direwolves plus Nutra Bullet. Um, you got Zerkill, Vamp, Dino, Balls, and then here you got B Zerk, Pipes, Rated, and JNR. So there's that. And then in the NA scene, I really like to look at this bracket here. Um, so we're in the loser bracket. And as you can see here, Pioneers, they lost to Cloud9 2 1, so they're clearly improving because in their winner bracket, they lost to Cloud9 2 0. Um, but when they f played them again, it was 2 1. So Pioneers had like a dominant fashion in Oddball, and then they just lost it. I don't know what happened, but Cloud9 just brought it back. Um, Pioneers to beat United. Um,. I'm pretty sure KCP they sent down uh, Sentinels into losers. Uh, Space Station lost to E United. Like E United went on an actual crazy run, and I'm surprised out of all the teams they lost to KCP. But it is possible. But like this team felt, like, I felt like they could have done something with this this weekend with the teams they beat. Like they beat Space Station, which was um, formal ace. Tylenol and deciding which that they place top eight. The United obviously plays top four. Um, they also beat the the formerly known Phase Clan, which hasn't been announced yet, which is Snipe Down, Bound, Booba Dooboo, and Falcated. Um, as you can see, uh, Falling Esports. Let's take a look at who they are. They went pretty a pretty far run. Not gonna lie. Um, it's Nuracle, the Gold Starby, Piggy Sane, and Sorrel. Okay, good on them. <sighs> Alright, damn, we gotta go to lower bracket. Excuse me, I had to sneeze there. Um, moving on, uh, Oxygen, they lost to G1, which is that team that I was talking about that could have been Fnatic, but I guess they're just under G1. Predevinators squad they went pretty far for that team for Oxygen uh, G1 I think that's an upset like they beat G2 Esports <laughs> um, G2 Esports let's see what the crowd pleasers are um, it's Kratos, Filthy, Suspector and Porgy so that must have been a crazy matchup that game <laughs> oh shit let me see here, bro. Okay, we're in, we're still in the losers. All right. So moving on. Just want to see Hydra Gaming. They went kind of far. Uh, we'll look at that later on. <sighs> Trying to see uh, business. Triggers down. They lost to E United, and then right here, as you can see, Sentinels got upset by E United, so that was a huge series. So who's on um, Triggers and Oh yeah, that's the Triton, Rob the Turtle, Australia, and Hunter. They went pretty far as well as as expected. Like they lost to a pro team. <coughs> uh, I'm just trying to see who else um, got upset in the bracket. There's anyone triggers down. United beat Phase. Phase beat that team. And nothing else. Really. You got Solaris points. Seal Team 6. So, yeah, that's about around what should happen. Uh, just the biggest upset was kind of like E United and. G1, all those kind of teams in the, around here in this bracket. But that's about it. I uh, hope you guys enjoy. Um, obviously, I'll put a link in the description down below of all these brackets if you want to see for yourself. And uh, take care. Peace.